Hey everyone, it's Robin Riley for Del Bello's Designs. Welcome to my video tutorial. This tutorial I am titling, I'll Be There. And I'm going to attempt to show you how I created this very unique card topper. If I can get the right angle, maybe you will be able to see that this is three-dimensional. There it shows how his eyes are lifted along with these wings are lifted. I hope you can see that. It's really hard to get a good view of that, but I'll show you how to do it and it's not all that hard. Hey, before we get started and I go into the supplies, I would like to invite you to join us in our Facebook groups. We have two of them. We have the Del Bellos Design Lounge, and that is where we showcase all of the Lavinia products. The other page that we have is called the Del Bellos Design a la carte, and there we showcase all of the other products, such as Nellie's, Cardio, Sweet Poppy, just the current things that Patty has in her shop. We're on other social media platforms. We're on Instagram, Pinterest, and TikTok. And if you wanna check us out there, all you have to do is search hashtag Del Bellos Designs. Okay, let's get started with the supplies that we're gonna be using today. So first off, I am going to be using Lavinia watercolor card. This is absolutely fantastic watercolor card because it is so super smooth. Even on the back side, there's very little tooth. And tooth is, for a quick definition, it's just kind of like an imprint that you can see, some patterning. So even on that side, your stamping would work really well. But on the smoothest side, that is ideal for stamping onto watercolor card. This measures four inches by six inches. Also needed will be a few scraps, and I just have a few cutoffs after I cut down my Lavinia watercolor paper. Next, we're going to be working with Lotka paper. Let me bring that in. Lotka paper is a very unique paper. It's made of fibers, and if you look closely, I think you can see some of the they almost look like strings that are in there, but it's actually fibers from a plant. And what you're going to need are two pieces of Lotka paper that measure four by six, along with a few scraps. And I'll get into the details as we move on. Next, what I have here is the stamp that we're using. And this is one of the newest stamps that are available. This is Irwin. He is an absolute gorgeous owl, LAV801. Next, you need a card base. And my card base today measures six inches by eight inches. And it is scored at the four inch point right here in the middle. You can use a bone folder to set that crease, or you can simply use a pencil. That's, that is up to you. Next, I will be using these inks. I'm using the Distress Oxide in Brushed Corduroy and Ground Espresso. I will be stamping Irwin in Versafine Claire Pinecone. I am using a white pen for some highlights. I'm also going to add a little bit of glitter with a bronze colored glitter pen. And for painting purposes, I am using a watercolor brush. You could use a paintbrush. You do not need to have this. It's just a nice tool and I've been really using mine a lot and I have been enjoying it. You will need some water for a couple different reasons and we'll get to that on each step. The type of adhesive that I'm using today will be the Art Glitter Designers Dry Clear Adhesive. That is how I will mount the topper to the card. But for mounting the lock to paper, I have found that the Beacon 3-in-1 glue or Beacon also makes a Fabri-Tac glue. They both work equally as well with Latka. 
And let me show you why I prefer that. Here I used a strip, a very thin strip of the Designer Dries Clear Glue. And you can see how it has left, now I did this about a month ago. So you can see how it has left a line and it's almost yellowed. And I don't want that to appear on my card topper. Here is the Fabri-Tac or the three-in-one. They virtually work identical. And you cannot see anything through that. Here I used a piece of double-sided tape. Now, you can see it, but you'd really have to be looking hard to see that. And you probably could strategically hide that tape. Now, I did use a Yoohoo glue stick here. And other than wrinkling it, that wasn't a bad choice. The Zig adhesive pens that we have, again, it's not too bad, but it just kind of makes a little bit of a pocking mark. So again, use what you have. This is just my preferred one, the Fabri-Tac or the three-in-one glue. So let's see, what else? I am going to be using my Misty tool for my stamping. And for raising the three-dimensional parts on the card, I am using some foam tabs. Scissors will be needed. Get yourself a good pair of scissors, something fine pointed for what we're gonna be doing today. This is going to be some fussy cutting. And I believe that's about all we're gonna need. Uh, you may need a ruler if you don't have a work surface with a ruler on it. And for video purposes, I have to put this mat down so you don't get a lot of glare. So I can't use my glass mat for measuring. All right, let's get started. Okay, first, what we're gonna do is I'm going to bring in this Latka paper. And it is longer than what I need. I only need a four inch by six inch pieces, piece to work with. But what I wanna demonstrate first is how easy this is to tear. So let me grab my ruler and I'm going to measure. Now, let's look real close. You check out that edge, see how it's torn? Okay, I've already torn three edges and you will get some curling sometimes. Personally, I like that look. Here's the other torn edge. And I'm gonna just show you one so you don't get bored watching me tear these. But all we need to do is just about at the six inch mark, use a paintbrush with water, or I'm using my water pen brush here. I'm gonna push out a little bit of water, make sure it's running. And I'm going to run a wet line straight up my paper. And it's okay if it goes wide in some areas, not in the others, it's fine. The idea is just to make this super easy to tear. And all I do is I place one finger on the edge of that water. And with the right hand, I'm just slowly going to pull this away. Here's a scrap that I will need later on. And there you have a really neat torn edge. This takes no time whatsoever to dry. It's super quick in drying. Now, what we're gonna do is bring that Misty in and we're gonna do a little bit of stamping on this Lotka. Now, latka can be a little bit tricky, so plan this out and practice on some scrap pieces that you have. Now, being that it's so flimsy, it's very easy to lift it from the paper. So you wanna to try to find a way to adhere, not so much adhere it, but stick it temporarily to the inside of your Misty. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to align this in the center and hopefully I have him straight and I'm going to attach my magnets so that they don't interfere with the stamp itself and I want this to hold tight main reason is my verse fine pint VersaFine Clear Pinecone is a, a tad bit dry. So I know already that I'm going to have to stamp 
and re-stamp a few times to get the deep brown color that I want. Now, you may not have to stamp several times if you have a newer pine cone ink pad. So let's just start with the first, first layer of ink. I'm going to ink this up, try to get as much of it as I can. Keep in mind when working with a larger stamp too, that it's really important to press as hard as you can in the center of that large stamp. For me, it always seems that if I'm gonna have an issue with getting a good defined print in the, it always seems to be an issue in the center for me. Another thing you can do is use some type of a tool. Now this is just an air hockey puck that a friend sent me. And you can use that to help put a lot of pressure on that stamp has a felt bottom and it slides over the plexiglass of this Misty very, very easily. Simple to do. Okay, let's see what kind of a print I got. Okay, not too, too bad. I do want it a tad bit darker. So what I'm gonna do is attempt a second print and hope that I don't get a double image. Okay, once again, I'm going to do a lot of pressing. Okay, let's see how that came out. Okay, I'm gonna call it quits on that. I'm, I'm pleased with that. I can add more color as I go on if I find that the color's a little bit muted. So I want to immediately clean my stamp. I just use water, a towel, such as a microfiber cloth towel, something that doesn't leave any fibers behind. There is such detail in these Lavinia stamps that you don't want little pieces of material, cotton, whatever it is you're working, to end up in those areas. Paper towel is the absolute worst, so don't use a paper towel. You definitely need some type of a cotton microfiber cloth. Okay, get in the habit of doing that too, and it'll just keep your stamps in better condition. Okay, now that that's done, I'm going to do a little coloring of the edges. And I just wanna do that to give it some interest. And let's look at the original. See how I have the edging here that is colored. I'm going to do that step now so that I can set this to the side to dry and we can proceed. So just to do those edges, I'm going to do a combination of the brown espresso and I'm just going to add some to my work surface. I'm going to add a little bit of the brushed corduroy probably really hard to see it on my mat since the colors are very similar. And I'm going to spritz both of those just with a little bit of water. I don't need a lot. Again, the latka is so, so thin. Now maybe you can see the color better, I hope. I'm going to just take this brush and I'm going to run it on the edge of my paper and let it do its thing. It's going to just bleed out into my paper. I want a little bit more water, so I'm going to just kind of squirt that on my work surface. There, now I'm getting some nice bleeding. I'm going to start just with the one color. You see how I'm trying to hold the latka still? Actually, at this point, I really don't have to because the water is going to hold it on to this specific work surface. So just, again, have a play and see what works best for you. And I'm, as you can see, I'm not doing anything special. I'm literally just letting the water do its own thing and move wherever it wants to go. Now I'm gonna come in, I'm not even cleaning the brush. I'm just going to add some of the darker color, which is, this is the ground espresso. And again, I'm just going to let it do its thing. Okay, so you never know what you're going to get when you do this. That's, I think, part of the fun of it. And we're going to stop right there and let that be. So I'm going to just very 
carefully peel this off my work surface and I'm going to set it off to the side to dry. Let me clean off my work surface quickly with a paper towel. Now, before we started, I went ahead and I stamped a second owl on a piece of latka. What I'm going to do here is I am going to cut out the areas that I want to create as the 3D effect. So I'm going to do the eyes and the longer uh, wings here. Okay, so like I said, I did this ahead of time so you don't have to watch. And that print really came out good, didn't it? That was nice and dark. Again, dryer. So using the scissors, I fussy cut out the eyes and the wing and I adhered them to one of the scraps that I told you you would need of the watercolor paper. So not to bore you, I already cut those two out. Here, this one has already been adhered to the watercolor card. Again, it's just a scrap. And I'm going to quickly attempt to cut this out. Another thing that's kind of nice about this, um, using watercolor card, first of all, and even if you don't get really a great cut and you have a little bit of that watercolor paper sticking out underneath, you'll be able to color that with the inks and no one will ever know. All right, this didn't take too long. All right, so now we have the three pieces that we are going to use, trim that off, to make the 3D effect. Okay, I am going to bring back in that latka paper that we just used. Okay, it's still a little bit damp, but that's okay, we're gonna proceed. Now, you could, at this point, set this aside and walk away for a few, you know, I don't know, maybe a half hour and it would be totally dry. But for the sake of this, I'm going to do a real quick blast of low heat to see if I can help this along. There is no need for you to do this step. You'll just let it dry on its own. Okay, that's almost dry, not too bad. So next I'm gonna come back in with that watercolor pen of mine, and I'm going to start applying the color to the owl. Now I need some paper towel here just in case. And I'm going to start with the lightest color, which is the brushed corduroy. And I'm going to do a very light coat of that color all over all over the owl. So when doing this, I you really don't need a lot of color on the brush itself. It spreads real easy. Again, latka being as thin as it is, it doesn't take a lot to get that spread around. All right, I am just hitting all of these light spaces. gonna get just a little bit in here not a lot again you're gonna do you when it comes to this how you want to color the owl itself but it's so easy to do when you're using the distress oxide inks um, number one they're just super easy to paint with and I think a lot of us already have a nice stash of these and it's super forgiving uh, it's not like paint. Paint sometimes is a little difficult to work with. I, I can liken this closest to a watercolor, using a watercolor paint. I am painting, even though I'm gonna cover these up, I am putting a little bit of color just in case when I apply the top, if a little bit is sticking out, there's going to be some color there and it won't stick out like a sore thumb. So again, rather forgiving when you do it this way. So you can see I'm not really 
taking a lot of time to do this step. This is pretty easy. All right. All right, so I have that pretty well covered. I even like leaving some of the white areas because that adds like a natural highlight that I don't have to be adding more to with the pen. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm going to clean off this little bit that's left, wipe off my brush, and I'm going to come in with the ground espresso. Now this is much darker. Again, I don't need a lot of water, nor do I need to clean my brush tip off because I'm just going into a similar color, just a tad bit darker. First thing I wanna do is I wanna create some dimension under his eyes. So I'm going to try to just stay in that darkened area that's already provided by the stamp now, I hope you can see that that has already created another dimension. You, it looks as if the eyes are popping off the page a bit. Same thing here. I'm going to go ahead and add some more of this dark ink just to create the dimension and make the, uh, his, the feathers around his eyes pop off a little bit. It's so easy to do this. And the more layers you apply, the more dimension you will create. So naturally you wanna let each layer dry. For today's purpose though, I'm just gonna go ahead and do one layer, that is it. I'm not going to add a lot more. Now I wanna make it look as if his belly is a little under, those top feathers. So just by darkening this area that's already been darkened for you with the stamp, I'm gonna add some to his legs too, you create that natural dimension. Let me clean this off. And what I'm going to do is again, I'm just gonna slide him to the side, let him dry hopefully naturally and I'm going to bring in these pieces. Now, same thing, light coat first with the brushed corduroy. Don't need a lot. Okay, light coat. As you can see, it's really a quick application. I'm not being too terribly careful. You will wanna take your time I'm sure, so that's a lot neater. Let's bring some of this gold down into here. And I'm going to, I call it gold and it's brushed corduroy, but once it hits this paper, it sure looks gold, a nice rich gold. So you just play around adding the color where you would like to add the color. Get a little bit around that beak and continue to do the same with the wings. So here I'm just going to, let's get a little bit more water here. And now it's not curling up as much because I already have the watercolor paper underneath. The only thing is this will take a tad bit longer to dry because it is on that watercolor paper already. When I'm going to fussy cut pieces out like this to create that three dimension, I find it easier to adhere this instantly to a piece of scrap card, cut it out. Just makes the that area that you're working with sturdier and it's just far easier to cut. Yes, you could just cut it straight from the latka paper, but it's, it's, it's tricky and I just find this to be a much easier method. Okay, so again, a very quick coat of that brushed corduroy, and I'll come back in now with the ground espresso and hit some of those highlight highlighted areas that I want to be darker. So first off, I, I want to, you know, let me start with this face. I'm going to go where 
it's already shaded for me. When you look at this stamp, you'll see very small areas that have been already darkened, which is nice because that's the guide that you use for adding your shadows. I do want this area of his eyes to be darker, but I have to be careful. I don't want it to be too wet because I don't want it to bleed into an area where I don't want it to be. So here's where you need to take your time. I do want to darken his eyes. So I'm going to do a thin light coating here. Now remember, like I said earlier, I'm speeding through this. I'm going quick so that I don't bore you with this process. But you take your time and you apply your coats one at a time until you get that depth of color that you are looking for. I need a little more water here to get some more ink spread. I hope you can see how this has changed just by darkening those areas just a little bit. Okay, now let me just get these feathers again. Just follow that natural line that's been placed there with the stamp. And let the water bleed it out. Okay, we're going to be happy with that right now. Same thing with the wings. Just go ahead, add the darkened areas along the lines that are already there for you. So this is really an easy process. Like I said, take your time, especially if you're new to watercoloring or painting with a brush or just using the latke paper. If you're new to that, just take your time. Give yourself some time to play. Okay, I'm going to finish painting this and I will rejoin you in a second. Okay, I have gone ahead and I have colored in the remaining wing. And what I want to do now is assemble the card. So I'm going to bring in my topper and the watercolor car is a cream color. It's not stark white. And I do want to suggest that if you are using the Lotka paper, you want to put that on top of a cream base. Putting it on top of a bright white makes the adhesive that you are using much easier to see. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just use, right now, the Beacon 3-in-1, and I'm going to apply just little dots all along the edge of the card. If I can get this out, it would help. There we go. This is, make sure I'm on the correct side, this is very similar to rubber cement. Remember that stuff? So if you get it somewhere you don't want it, you just need to let it dry and then it peels right off. You can roll it just like you used to do with rubber cement when you got it on your fingers. I'm also going to dab a little bit just in the center of the owl himself. Okay, now make sure also you are using this in a well-ventilated area. It does have an odor. Again, very similar to rubber cement. So I'm going to hover this piece. Sorry about that with the camera. I'm going to hover this and gently tap it onto my card. Now this is not a quick drying glue, but it adheres quickly. It'll only take a few minutes before it's completely dried. Now, at this point, if I wanted, I could actually go back in, which let me demo that, and I can high, I can paint right on top of this. Remember, that's watercolor card. It's going to absorb the water and it's not going to warp. So I could go back in at this point and add another quick layer of that dark brown. 
while I left you for a few minutes, I actually did run this under my heat tool so that I could go ahead and do a second layer of brown here. All right, let's get another one just here and there. Now, just like everything else, you want to allow this to dry before proceeding. I forgot to do his little talons. So let me just add some color there. But it's that simple to do. All right, you can already see there's a lot of dimension in this card just from the torn edges and just the natural movement of this paper when it's wet. It will flatten out a tad bit, but not completely. Okay, so to apply the rest of the pieces, here's where I want, naturally, to put the eyes. And as you can see, there are some white areas. And like I said, what's nice is you can go in at this point, since my fussing cutting wasn't that perfect, I can go in with a little more paint, paint, ink, and just add it to those areas that are standing out. I could do this even when it's on the card, and it would work just fine. But there you get those edges. Some of them I like for highlights, and that's okay. All right, so let's go ahead and let me show you how I adhere this. So I'm going to use those. I have rectangular foam shapes, and I'm going to just add a few to the back of the eyes. And there's a release paper here that you need to peel off. And what I like to do, coming in with that three-in-one glue, I'm just going to add a little bit of glue on the back of those sticky dots. Now what that allows, I'm gonna hit the side here too, just to make sure they're nice and stuck down. What that's going to do is allow me some wiggle time. If I didn't put that on there and I sat those eyes on here in the wrong place, I couldn't move them. So that little bit of glue gives me a little bit of wiggle. So there, got the eyes in place. Now I wanna do the same thing for the wings. So I'm going to adhere, peel, and add a little bit of glue. Now you could take one of these foams and cut them in half to fill in this area so that the entire thing doesn't bend. But for demo purposes, I'm just gonna do the one so you can see. Okay, let me make sure I get the right one in the right place. There we go. So that wing is on. And I want to do the same thing with the last wing. Let me get that peeled off and in place. Oops, forgot my glue and almost had a little accident there because I did not have that in the right place. Let me get that. Okay. So now we have those 3D elements in place. I hope you can see that. I give it a little lift. Maybe you can see, you know, the, the lift is going to depend on how thick your foam adhesive squares or dots, whatever it is that you have, are. Now here's where I really enjoy doing this. What I like to do is now add all of the other elements. I want to do the highlighting, adding some of the glitter gel pen to this. You could, again, looking at this, it's definitely not as dark as my original. You can see that. Can't ever repeat anything twice. But I could totally let this dry and go back in there with more of the oxide inks and paint those areas to make them darker. I could even use a watercolor marker at this point if I wanted to darken up those areas. Again, use what you have in your stash. So I'm gonna take this white pen 
and I'm going to first start with his eyes. I want to bring back those white areas. Now, depending on the type of pen you are using, you may only need to put down one coat of the pen ink. You may have to go back like I'm going to have to do and add another layer of white. Because what this says, remember, this is a water reactive ink along with the pen. So this pen is going to suck up the color. So you add multiple layers. Every white pen is a tad bit different. So use what you have and decide, you know, once you lay down one layer, if you need to go in with a second layer. Here I'm just adding some highlights to the eyes because ink kind of bled into an area that I didn't want it. But it's very, as you can see, it's very easy to cover it up with the pen. And I can already go in and add my second layer and get results. You can see how it's whiter already. I like to turn my artwork to come to me so that my hand isn't flying into areas that I don't want it. Again, just adding some white areas. Now, when using a, a pen, a white gel pen, I find it easy to, or I find it very helpful to scratch off every once in a while onto a dry piece of paper. And that like cleans the nib and makes it easier and gets that ink flowing again real well. Cause it can get kind of bound up a tad bit with um, the ink that's underneath. And as you know, this isn't totally dry. So again, I'm just adding some highlights here and there. Same thing with the feathers. I'm just going to add a little bit of a highlight to lighten it up in areas. And same thing with the feathers. I really like to add just a little bit, not on every feather, that's for sure. You don't wanna do every single one. You just wanna highlight areas here and there, very random, no rhyme or reason as to why I'm picking where I'm adding it. Scratching off that pen. And again, you may have to come in with a second layer of your ink. Now here I was able to leave some areas white, so that's, that's helping me move this along. I keep scratching off my pen because it's picking up some of the ink. And again, highlighting just here and there. Right, getting a little highlight on those talons. And I wanna get a little bit on these wings. Okay, so I did that rather quickly, but I wanted to show you the basic process of how you can make a 3D effect using Irwin. I think he's really easy because the fussy cutting was super simple on this. You could add some splats if you wanted, which if, I don't know if the camera will pick this up. If you look on my original, I do have some splat marks. I just wanted this, this one to be a little bit brighter and I think that happened. Now this one is definitely brighter. So I don't feel the need to add those splats, but again, you do you. Take your time, don't rush. Don't rush like I did. Take your time, let it dry completely, and then add your layers. But wow, what a difference, huh? And I used all the exact same colors and I got two totally, totally different results. So to finish this card, all you need is that card base. Fold it along the crease. You can use your fingers to crease that, you can use a pencil, you can use a bone folder, whatever you have in your stash you use. And I don't use the three-in-one beacon glue for this. I'm just going to use my adhesive, my Art Glitter Designer Dry Clear Adhesive. Add 
some glue on the edge. I never go completely up to the edge because I don't want it to seep out. And place that directly on the top. The measurements are identical, so it's an easy one to place on the card base. Give it a good press. And there you have the card. Okay, I hope you enjoyed watching this process. I hope you give it a go. I love using the latka paper. I think it's a lot of fun and you just never know what you're gonna get. And honestly, I just love how this bled the way that it did. Totally amazing. Totally hard to believe that I used the exact same colors, right? Hey, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time to do so. And if you give this a go and you try it, how about posting it in our group and tag me, please, so I can see what you've done and share with everybody else. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.